Well, we're back again. Episode 6, you are listening to Low Sweet Fire Production. Boy, it's going to be a good one today. I'm so excited. But just remember what I always say, two ears, one mouth. Because if you don't listen to Low, I don't know who you're listening to. And I always come down to a motivational quote. The quote today is going to be step up, look up, link up. Make sure you do all three. Go in that order. Follow that system. That system will take you to another level that you never thought you'd ever be. And my guest did the same thing. He stepped up, he looked up, he linked up. That's why I've been driving all my life. I'm talking about stepping up. I never forget when my mom came in and said, you got to step up and be the big brother right now. You got to take over the house. You got to make sure your brother and sister are going to be in a great place all the time. I said, what do you mean by that? Well, your dad is gone. You all alone now. It's up to you. While I'm working 13, 14 hours a day, I need you to step up to the plate. So what I did, did exactly what she asked, stepped up. Came home from school, made sure my brother and sister did a couple things. One, homework were first. Sit at the table, do your homework. When they got done with their homework, they were able to go out and play. While they out and playing, I'm in the side getting ready for food, getting ready for dinner. How did I feed them? Mom at work, know what I did? Stepped up to the plate. Went in my mom's bedroom, lit up under the bed, and we grabbed the food stamps. Took the food stamp, went to the corner store. Bought the meat, bought the bread. Came back, 6 o'clock, lights came on, everybody in the house. Sit down at the table, we prayed. As we get through praying, we ate. What did we eat? Spiced salmon bread. It was okay. It was good. We ate. But I remember the time I had to step up to the plate to come up with different situations. My brother and sister said they were hungry again. No problem. The next time I went to the store, bought the bread, bought the meat, came back home. I told the man at the meat store, don't make it too big. Take one slice, make it two slices. Now we got back home, we ate once, we ate twice. Everybody was full. Step up to the plate. I even got to the point where I even made sure everybody had different assignments. Yes, one person had the kitchen, one person had the bathroom, one person had the bedroom, one person had the floor. We worked together as a team. We had a system. We had a plan. So when mom got home, all she had to do was take a shower and rest and go to sleep. Because everything was done, I stepped up to the plate. That's not it, though. I still had to look up to somebody. Somebody had to help me continue to grow to be a young man because all I had was my mom because she was was working all the time. I had a talent. I loved the talent. I had a talent I can dance. I can pop. I can lock. But I said, how do I ever to do that? My uncles were dancers. They did parades. They did talent shows. They did concerts. They did all that. So I'm just watching them and watching them. They taught me how to dance. I found a hobby. I I looked up to them. No idea. I took that same hobby right there, and I ended up starting doing talent shows. I started doing a different concert. I even had an opportunity to model for J.C. Penney in a suit on Easter Sunday. I looked up to them, and that found me in a place where somebody recognized my talent. I remember going to junior high school, got ready to do a concert. Right, they had little talent shows going on. I stepped inside, I started dancing, I started dancing, I'm popping, I'm locking. And right, and the guy said, "Man, I like the way you dance. You're doing good. I like that." He said, "I want to learn how to dance like that too." His name was Mike Loman. Me and Mike became best friends. But Mike Loman wasn't just an average guy. He was the best athlete at the school. He did football, basketball, track, weightlifting, and baseball. Five sports in junior high school. I like, man. I want to be just like Mike. Not Michael Jordan, Michael Loman. Right? Went to high school, followed Michael Loman all the way through his path, all the way through his career. And I'm telling you right now, that will help me become the man I am today. Because when I looked up to him, I knew the sky was the limit. But at the same time, I had to link up with someone too. I had to link up with people that want what I want. People that want to be great. People that want to take their game to the next level. I had to link up with them. Because here's what I do know. I said it once, I'm going to say it again. When you make it to the top, if you're not linked up with the right people, it's lonely at the top. Don't get to the top of there by yourself. What you going to do up there by yourself? Nobody there with you. So you want to link up before you get to the top, or you want to get to the top, bring people to the top with you. Well, my guest today, them three things I just told you, stepped up to the plate, Looked up to other people that are doing successful things. And he linked up with the right people. And that made him also one of the most successful student athletes that I know. Who just followed his dream. Worked hard. Earned it. And I'm going to introduce him right now. Right now, college football 
college graduate, professional lawyer, my man, my former athlete, my friend, Ellis Martin. What's going on? Hey, Coach, it's a pleasure to be on the show. And let me just tell you, I want to stand up out of my chair right now. That's right. I'm, I'm hyped. I'm that's ready right. to go. One, two, Coach. One, two. That's One, it. One, two. That's it. You know, it's, it, and that's the thing about it, right? When you round the right people, it, force, it, want, it make you want to step up. Makes right? you want to step up. You're right. And then if you stepping up to the plate, now you're like, man, if that person make me want to step up, let me look up to that person. Yes? Listen, I had, uh, so Darius Butler told us a long time ago, if you were the smartest person in a, in a car, in a, a car full of friends, if you were the smartest person in the car, you were in the wrong car. Ooh. Ooh, so you can't learn from nobody. You can't hey, learn. Huh? You're in the wrong car. Always be inspired. That's right. I've just been a student to the game. Always be a student of the game. Wow, I like that. But smarter mm-hmm. person in the mm-hmm. car, <laughs> we're the road car. That's right. Woo! That's right. Boy, that's some powerful stuff right there. That's right. You know, it's 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 interesting. I go way back to, man, years and years and years ago, I remember going to, I was at YMCA. Mm-hmm. And Andre Smith, I met him because I was coaching his kids in track and field. Shout out to Coach Andre. Oh, yeah, all day long, yeah. right? Because he was another impact person, right? He, I mean, he brought together a relationship that I never thought I'd have. He was a coach to you, a friend to me, that brought a relationship where I become a coach to you. So, it's, wait a minute, did we just link up something? See, it's it keep coming back to it, right? That's right. It keep coming back to that linking up, right? That's right. So here it is. Now, here it is. He say, let's do a football camp. Yep. YMCA. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. First thing I ask him, how much I'm going to get paid? <laughs> <laughs> uh, keep in mind, now, at this time, I'm not doing well. I'm, I'm driving a truck for a company called Hughes Supply. Right. I'm, I, haven't, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't switched over. To the, the other side, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm talking to him and like, he said, I'm gonna pay you $500. I'm saying to myself, boy, I made $543.53 every two weeks. Right. You think you me 500 for one day? What time I need to be He's there? He's there. I was there, right? That's I was right. there. He was there. But, but here's what's even crazy I get there, I'm thinking it'll be four or five more coaches. Right. It was just me and him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm like, where's the other coaches oh at? Oh my god! Right, so I get there. I'm like, he's, and he tell me, go get him, low. Go get who? Cause he he knew one thing about me. I was great in group training. That's when right. I can have I can That's have a right. whole group and have everybody. I can have a 200 people doing jumping jack at the exact same time. Camp King, Camp King. What do you, <laughs> you, you know that journey? Interesting, right? That's right. It's interesting it how sure you get is. to that certain place now. It sure is. It's like, I, if I didn't. Know how to do that 20 years ago, might not be the camp king today. That's right. Right? That's right. That, go was a, that was a stepping stone. I agree. Dre. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, let me just do it. So I'm thinking, well, it's speed training, it's football. I'm not going to do all the stuff I did at track. Then I said, what we're going to do, we're going to separate the groups, right? And then we're going to just start doing the camp. So all of a sudden, we go in the camp and I'm looking, watching. I was like, man, that little boy fast. <laughs> you know, then all of a sudden, there was another little boy. Was moving too. I say, God, you know, I ain't trying to be funny, but you know, I I'm coaching in Pine Hills, uh, Popka. <laughs> you know, I'm on the other side of town, right? So right. I'm used to national champions. I'm the, you know, we national champions over here in track. You know, I, you know, I got Quincy McDuffie. That's right. Ran a 45, 99, 400 meters in mm-hmm. high school. Mm-hmm. I got Amber People running 10 fives in high school. Yep. So now I come over here and I see the little boy running. I'm like, this this boy fast. Right? So I'm looking around. So I asked Dre. I'm like, Dre, who is these two kids right here? He said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's my friend. No, his dad is a lawyer. I said, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, he sponsored the camp. I said, all right, good. So I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, there you go, Dre. Now you want to brag. Now people do. Somebody sponsored the camp. You want to get his kid MVP. Mm-hmm. He really didn't earn it. But right. I recognize you. It was you, that little boy. That was you. Well, Let's just say I had a little speed back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a little speed back I was then. Try, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out where that speed come from, too, Kyle. Like you and me both. Come, huh? You, you and me both. Your mama said it come from her. I'm not telling what she told me. I said, you wasn't fast yet. You're not lying. Yeah, yeah, it comes right. from her. 
comes from her. <laughs> right. It so I'm sitting like, okay. So I look at the boy fast, and it was you, and then the other kid. Now, here's what's crazy about this, this story, right? You, you just never know because I got, and I'm, I'm going to say this, right? And I know we can say this. I got a little fast white boy. That's right. <laughs> then I got a little fast Italian boy. That's right. How's that even possible? I, so I'm looking like, no way. So I said, well, hey, you know what? I went, I said, who y'all daddy is? So you, your daddy come over, right? And his daddy come over, mm-hmm. Mike and Mike. <laughs> it's by Eminem. faith. It's by faith. They come over. I said, these boys are fat. They should run track. And hell, your daddy, ah, yeah, right. They, they just fast out here against these kids. I said, no, these boys are fat. I want them to come to a track meet with me. Come see what they got, right? Mm-hmm. So y'all come over to Oak Ridge High School. We get ready to line up now. Here's, here's the lineup. You ready for the lineup? Yep. Ha ha, Clinton Dix. First round drop it, Green Bay Packers. <laughs> Marvin Ford. Colorado State, Doug Roche, Frank Thompson, FAU, Tyler Floyd, Victor Floyd. I'm like, this is the fastest kids. I got the fastest in the nation. We winning everything. Somebody said they fast. We're going to plan to go get them. That's right. You remember that? Oh, yeah. We line up. Ellis Marta line up and Madam Milano. We put everybody in 100 meters first. Pow! Take off. Ellis Marta wins. Everybody complained. No, no way. He, he, he cheated. He he jumped the gun. He, no, no. I said, I said, okay. And your daddy, make him run it again. We line up now. We run it again. You win again. You don't beat the national champions. Okay, let's move to the 200 meters. We go to 200 meters. You didn't win that one. You got second. 200 meters. You were quick and fast in that 100. 200 meters, you didn't win it. But I was better at the 200. You would be, but I was better at the 200. But let me tell you, our boy Maddie, he was blowing those boys out in the 400 yeah, meters. So I would have said, so Maddie can't win the 100, can't win the two. Now we're talking about Matt and Milano now, right? Oh, yeah. Matt right? Milano. Right, right. So shout out to Matt. That's right, because Matt Milano is now one of the top linebackers in the NFL. First team all pro. Oof. Look at that. Now, y'all seven, eight years old. Matt and Milano say, I say, Matt, you got to beat him in something. So let's move to the 400. Now, keep in mind, now, I got some runners in the 400. Yep. Matt and Milano wins the 400. Mm-hmm. I said, Matt, you might need to go to the 800. Matt and Milano wins the 800. Oh, yeah. So now here it is, the two boys from YMCA come over against <laughs> the poor from Pine Hill to Parker <laughs> and, and, and compete with the national champion and the history, the legacy, the journey begins. How you feel about that? Ellis? How do I feel about that? That was um, that was a big moment for. Um, I can't speak for Matt, but of course we see where Matt went. But it was a big moment for us because we, um, you know, built that confidence and made us realize, you know, hey, maybe there's more to this. And uh, ultimately, it led us to. Uh, you know, an unbelievable experience in Eugene, Oregon at, uh, you know, the Junior Olympics. And we had our success there. I remember we uh, we won the four by one. Uh, we got third in the four by one. Um, and so Matt ended up getting, I think he placed as well. And he was in the 800. So, you know, we did our thing and, you know, track, just generally speaking, track really took our game to the next level. And it gave us, uh, put us in a position where, you know, we had those opportunities come in because it all translated to the football field. You were just much faster being done with track, you know, right out of track season, you're just moving. You're, right. you're, you're in better shape than other guys who may have been playing other sports. So it just gave us that edge. And of course, you know, it's the ultimate competition in track. You're not just competing with with uh, those around you, those in your heat, you're competing with yourself. You're trying to, you know, beat the your best time, right? Constantly, right? And so you're. It's a constant mental battle, but you know, just as it's a mental battle, you're you're competing against others, and so, you know, it's all about staying loose and, um, you know, 
just just being ready to uh, rise up for the competition. I, I love how you say it. Uh, just ready for the battle, compete, compete, and it go back to step up. Yep. Right. So I, I'm just used. To, I, I forget the four by one. We take off. <laughs> we 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 roll in really good. Yep. Eugene, Oregon. Eugene, Oregon. Fontaine track, the Olympic track, famous track. Yep. First time a lot of guys even been on airplanes. Opportunity That's by right. the Eugene, Oregon, to go compete at a young age. 10, 11, 12 years 10 old. 10 years old. Amazing. Yeah. Right? The experience of a lifetime. It sure was. The, the the relationship. Looking up to the bigger guy like Ember Peoples and Quincy McDuffie, mm -hmm. who they won uh, four gold medals. Right? You remember that, right? When you're around greatness, when you're around guys who just take it to the next level, you want to naturally take it to the next level. And... um you know, it always goes back to you are who you're affiliated with. If you're affiliated with some champions, then at some point you're going to be a you're champion. champion. And, 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 and I like because even if we didn't win the race, we still a champion because we finished the race. Right? That's right. We won the best in the country. And I go back to stepping up to the plate because what I don't know if people realize, you was the anchor leg, <laughs> the one that bring it home. That's right. The trust was there. Everybody trust that Ellis Marta gonna get it home for us. Keep in mind now, we hadn't lost a race all year long. Right. We state champions, mm -hmm. regional champion, local champion, Baytown champion, Miami champion, tri uh, Paul Stadium champion, going against all the mind. We beat everybody. That's right. Nine time for the national championship. We line up in Eugene, Oregon. We come around the corner. We in fifth place. Mm -hmm. Fifth place coming out the curve. They bring it to Ellis Marta. You got. Four people in front of you. We got to get on the podium top three. Mm -hmm. What went through your mind? And how did you go from fifth and get right to the last three, four, five yards and pass up fourth place, third place to put us in third? What went through your mind back then? You know, it's all you always fall back on how you practice. And, um, and just, you know, you remember – Damn well how we practice. Yes. We, um, you know, we were having to hock down people all the time, mm -hmm. and so it was nothing new. And so when the time came to to make it happen, you're not thinking about anything. You're not panicking because it's, you know, we had done it before, and so it's nothing I'd never seen. And uh, and so practice how you play. And so I w the moment wasn't too big. It was just a matter of just running as fast as you possibly can and just relying on your training. Right. And that's what that's what it always comes down to, always falling back on your training. And, um, you know, because at the end of the day, you practice how you play. And you got to practice hard. Yeah. got to practice. L let me ask you this. You say, you know, come down to your training. You got to practice hard. Let me ask you this. Do you feel like that training that you did as a little boy, 8, 9, 10 years old, mm -hmm. lined up on a track? We had my, our track practice, you know, you guys had four four <laughs> hundreds. Three yep. three hundred, two two hundred, mm -hmm. and a one hundred meters. Mm -hmm. That was, that was we we trained, right? The, we we PR in that practice. We we competing like that. We went against the older guys to get better. We we, we you remember even having track meets as a practice? Practice. Yes. Yep. We did it right. Mm -hmm. And how did that help you in life when it comes to other challenges and other hard work? you know, other obstacle. How did that help you in life? It it was a, you know, like I said, it, it was a, uh, a huge stepping stone because, again, everything, all the preparation you do and all your athletics, it all translates to the real world. Your preparation, right now I'm, uh, I'm an attorney and I'm blessed to, to be sitting here right now after going through everything that we went through but it all translates as far as preparation goes. I still treat big meetings, big hearings, big anything like it's a game. I, and gearing up, I mean, you're doing – it's the same exact process. So, you know, that took me to high school and then what – you know, building on that, it took me to college. And then college, you're really – I mean, you really refine that preparation – and it just takes you to the next level. And um, and so it prepares you for, for 
all forms of life, you know, being able to overcome adversity and, um, you know, going through and actually pushing yourself during practice or in that preparation phase, it, um, it just puts you in a much better position to be able to execute on what you uh, set out to do. Right. So, that, I mean, this, I want to kind of like, like fast forward a little bit now because we talk about the hard work. We talk about at a young age how we actually uh, grind and have a different focus, right? We were focused on greatness. Mm-hmm. Like we said, you just said it again. You said earlier, focus on greatness, greatness. right? But all the, that was easy because you're fast, you worked hard, we competed with national champions, right? One of the best in the nation, right? And all said and done, or state champ, or region champ. We, we was good. Mm-hmm. But now we go to football. Now it's a team sport. Yeah. You know, the four by one, you know, you bring the stick. We still got to do your part. But now it's a team sport. You transition for an individual sport. A track is really an individual sport. You go to football. You know, I'm the fastest. I'm Ellis. I can, no, I'm, I'm that guy. Everyone knows who's I, who I am. When you, What was challenges? Because I, I can remember the challenges. What were the challenges? And when you had them challenges, why do you just give up? Why do you just say, you know what, I really don't need this? Because I keep bringing back that you, 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 you come from a successful family. You got a good family. You got good support, right? I mean, it's, it is a different from YMCA and Pine Hill. Let's just keep it real. So, but you didn't treat it like that. Mm-hmm. You, you like, yeah, I'm at YMCA, but. I, I got the mind, mindset of Pine Hills, a popka, low income area. I'm gonna grind. I'm gonna go get it. I'm a, right. How did you overcome them challenges, and why did you continue to battle to be the best? That's a great question. Mm-hmm. But and I will say, I got some unbelievable parents. I got some unbe- unbelievable people in my corner. Um, and first and foremost, I mean. God has has just led me in the right direction. It's been He's been my foundation. So um, it really all goes back to uh, you know earning it in life and and being able to you know at some point realize well when they're no longer around where where am I going to be? What's what's going to fulfill me in this life? And what that's all about is you know, earning and working hard at what you do and, and deciding to be the best at something, at whatever it is. You could be anything. You could be a janitor, but it's doing the best and having pride in your work. And so, obviously, I looked at, I mean, my whole life, I always had big shoes to fill, but I want to fill those shoes in my own way. And, you know, something I, I've learned through my faith journey is that we were put here not to start something that wasn't finished, but to start something new. Right. And so um, it, it all goes down to, I mean, pride in your work and actually, you know, being independent, really. And that's, I want to be my own person. I want to contribute, um, you know, my skills and, and be able to contribute in a way that nobody else does and to create more or less create right. my own path right and so i don't i never wanted things given to me never never ever so it all just kind of went back to uh my experiences just in in sports you know just learning how to um you know overcome the concept of okay it's not going to just be given to you you got to earn it correct so speaking of earning like, like you come coming from coach low you know you know, Coach Lowe was the hard, hard coach. Let's go. We're here for business. There's a difference from, you know, I tell people all the time, there's two type of credit card, American Express and Visa. Yep. American Express, <laughs> we're here to take care of business, right? <laughs> if, you want, if, you don't take right. Care, if you don't want to take care of business, get your Visa card to go on vacation. That's right. But when we step on that track, we're here to take care of business. That's it. They that's knew it. it. Right? So that's my, that's Coach Low and coach and, and, and Ellis relationship. Yeah. Did that transition over to you sports for you with your coach relationship? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, to be coached so hard at such a young age, it it gives you that edge. It gives you that advantage because it's what you're gonna see when you get older. If you're not used to it. If you're not able to be coachable, if you're not able to listen and take direction, they're not they're not going to want anything to do with you. 
And so it all comes down to effort. And something I remember Ray Lewis said this, I mean, along with uh, passion, I mean, passion and effort, that's free. Mm -hmm, That comes free. I learned the effort from coming up with you and Coach Andre. And, um, you know, because we would never go out there and waste time. If anything, if we were going through the motions, you kick us off the track and we'd be having another practice later that evening. Yes. So that's <laughs> right. just how it went. Yes, it was. And oh, so dang. you get the work in now. <laughs> right. Right. Or we're going to do it at a later time yeah. when I get your best. One and, one and that's, that's, how it, that's how it went. If you say I, I go to Pot Warner football challenges, what challenge did you have? Because to keep in mind now, you, you're fast, but so we, there's an expectation. He fast, put him at running, but let him go. Did you have challenges? And what challenge was there in Pop Warner football? Pop Warner football? I'd say the, really the only challenge is it was, it was just being able to overcome the adversity of the hard coaching, more or less. And, and that was really it. From a playing standpoint, I'd say, uh, I mean, again, I, I was blessed with, with a lot of gifts, speed and, and quickness and power. And so, really, it was, uh, it was all about refining that and, you know, getting me to want to do it and right. to want to do the work. Right. And it naturally just became a habit, like going out and training every day. My parents, I mean, God bless, I have some of the greatest parents in the world, and so... You know, they gave me these opportunities, and they they wanted to drive me to these practices. So and, you you bring up more, uh, parents, parents, parents. Uh, so parent support, parents right there with you supporting, support all the support in the world from uh, you know whether it was athletics, school. I mean, I, I'd consider uh, when it came to school, my mom was a disciplinarian. I mean, she was making sure I was sitting down, doing my homework. But on the flip side, when it came to athletics, I mean, my dad was, uh, you know, he was definitely hard on me, to say the least. It was uh, So I'd be coming back from, from track practice dealing with the same thing at home. If I wasn't, if I wasn't winning every, you know, race and practice, you know, I was he was giving it to me, so, so, so it was constantly just being pushed in all areas of my life. Yeah, I, I like that, but I I'm t- I just want to try to find this. I don't know. I'm looking for something here now because if your dad didn't push you, your mom wasn't there. You know, get on that homework. Get on that homework. Your your journey has been tougher. I, I will say, I mean, wholeheartedly. Having two parents under the roof of one home is is a big advantage in a lot of ways, and and I'm just so blessed to be able to come up in a two parent household, and uh, I actually have my son and my wife out out there right now, and so it's um, same deal, right. same deal. Want to want to be able to provide? It's not material things; it's the meaningful time, the teaching, the teaching, and I was always um, I was always guided coming up by my parents in every right. way, shape, or form. And so not that it was at a point where I was spoon-fed, but I had to earn it. Right. I had to earn it. I wasn't given things. Right. Um, well, time has changed now. Time don't change now. You look out at the youth sports now, a lot of stuff, they want you just to give it to them, and you, they want you just to, okay, it's because he's fast, and I'm just letting him just come on. Like Nobody don't want to work for it. It's hard. It's tough out there now. I mean, they got to get to the point now where they're – you know, they, they, the game just don't change from youth football, from high school all the way to college. And, you know, it's it's almost like NFL, you know, is down. It's, what are they treating youth football like they're treating in NFL? They want to pay you. They want to, you know, you got to find a way to get you in. It's, times have totally changed. And I know you probably haven't seen the change all the way, but what change have you seen that you said, wow, <laughs> if they were like this, if it was like this back in the days, I don't know what I would have done. I don't know what I would have done. All I can say is, you know, players have more access to, you know, the training that that I got and that I received when I was coming up. I mean, the way the way I see it, you and Coach Andre are the are the pioneers 
of this training that we see everywhere in the country now. And so I'd say the biggest thing is, you know, when it comes to um, when it comes to collegiate athletics and when it comes to sports now, I mean, it, it's really changed into uh, into a business. And, and, you know, nowadays it's much less about, you know, team mm-hmm. and a little bit more about, well, what can you do for, for me? me? And the thing is, I don't disagree with NIL whatsoever. I think these players should be getting paid. And I think, um, you know, it's been unfortunate for so long, you know, they've more or less been exploited, you know, with their name, image, and likeness. And they should be paid their fair share. But at the end of the day, there's got to be a silver lining and there's got to be something that can still make these teams a team and to come together because culture was everything back when I was playing. And I can't imagine how, how difficult it is to – to really maintain and start a, a winning culture when nowadays it's just uh, such a volatile environment and right. it's ever changing right. landscape. Right. And so, Craig, like you said, um, it's interesting because we were talking about once you do get the money in NIL, now it's like you got to produce. You got to produce. You got to produce. So, it don't went to now, what have you done for me lately? Cause he, so now you know it's it's more stress, but you also got players getting paid who haven't produced, and so it creates a lot of uh, dysfunction in, in the locker room. I mean, you got guys who are touting about their NIL deal here, their NIL deal here. You know, guys who are just more or less, um, you know, bragging about the deals that they have, and of course, that's not going to create a healthy culture in the locker room, and so they're. Especially with the transfer portal, now that you know it's it's such a transient environment where any guy can just pick up and leave. Right. I couldn't imagine the NFL. It's uh, so they had the transfer portal open during bowl season. That's the equivalent of having free agency open right. during the playoffs right. in the NFL. Right. And so there's just got to be a way to to reel this all in a little bit. And um, and really, I think. There is a there is a solution to it, and there are lots of talks going around with um, you know collegiate athletes being considered as employees, according to the National Labor Relations uh, Board. So, with that said, if they're gonna if we're gonna call athletes student uh, co- collegiate athletes employees, right? They need to be treated like employees, and when I say treated like employees, you know, gotta have benefits. Got to have benefits. All right. And we're going to touch base on that right there. So I'm glad you kind of throw that in right there. And before we get into that, I want to move now that we're talking about went to high school, right? We go to a smaller school, mm-hmm. Lake Highland Prep. Now we're at Lake Highland Prep. We're not at the Olympia. We're not at the Dr. Filler, who was hot school back then, right? Bigger school, bigger level, Popka. We chose to go to Lake Highland Prep, right? We're talking about education, a good school. One of the schools that everyone can't just go to. But you had the opportunity to go to Lake Highland Prep. Mm-hmm. We played football, right? Play against top teams, right? We get there. We play in ball. N- nothing really going on. And all of a sudden, six, seven, eight guys rise to the top at Lake Highland Prep. We got a great season. Beat Jones High School back then. Oh, yeah. I, I remember that. Now. Got 15, 20 colleges on the sideline. Spring ball. Crazy. Yep. I call it the Rainbow Coalition. <laughs> it, was, it was so many different colors. I seen LSU, Cincinnati, <laughs> Florida Gators, Alabama, like red, blue, green, purple. Like, wow. And I was sitting there talking to all the schools, you know, UConn, Dara Perkins, there, everybody there. You know, and all of a sudden they come out and it, history was made. Blake from Maine go to Vanderbilt. Ellis Marta go to UConn. Tyler Ricker go to Illinois. And I mean, all the guys going to Cincinnati, all the big schools, great opportunity. How's that process for you leaving Lake Highland, going to school college? Because it wasn't an easy process because we had to do a lot. You still had to work hard off, out, out of the game, you know, the camps, the training, right? We talked about you only had, like, very small opportunity. You know, we could have went to school for academic. We know that. We had the grades. You know, we, we got the support from the parents. We paid for college. But no, why? Why didn't I pay for college when I know I got the talent to go out there and earn it? 
You went out there to all the different camps, did your part, came back, relationship building between you and Daryl Perkins. We talked about that on our last episode. How's that relationship now, coach, trainer? I mean, coach, player relationship. Coach Perk was at my wedding. Coach Perkins was at my wedding. I mean, he, uh, again, it, it, was a, it was a difficult process because at the end of the day, there is a lot of lip service. It's more or less you're trying to carry on a relationship with your girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, that was, a, that was a fun time, but it was, a, it was a time of such uncertainty. You know, of course, with uncertainty, you got some anxieties. Where do I want to go? And you're taking trips, but really, um, you know, when I met Coach Perk, Coach Perkins, um, you know, he was. Uh, it, it's hard to it's hard to explain how our our relationship was different from others because I mean I, I cherish our relationship to this day, and Coach Perkins was pretty much the biggest reason why I ended up going to UConn because he kept it so real. I knew he cared. And to this day, I mean, we still talk, you know, two times a month to this day and, um, you know, love Coach Perkins. And I know he was on your last show. And so shout out to uh, to Coach Daryl Perkins. Yeah, man. So it go back. We talk, we've been talking about on the show, coaches, player relationship, during the recruiting process, during the season, uh, after the season, after the college career is over, that relationship, that relationship there, because you never know. What if you want to be a college coach and he got a head coaching job, right? That relationship is still there, intact. You, you follow me from there? Or like I say, coming to your wedding, you know, that is huge. And I think that part going to start changing because there's no team, there's no culture. Like it's it's becoming money ball versus football. Right. It's becoming athlete student instead of student athlete so the relationship side of it is almost on the back burner i mean when you agree i mean because i i have a relationship with somebody which i don't know the coach gonna be there the next year or the kid gonna transfer next year and the thing is i couldn't agree more and um actually i i've been talking to a, a few of my teammates who um who are you know they they took some coaching opportunities at the D, division one level and so um a big issue that they're dealing with right now is having to recruit the players that are already there. And so think about it. You had just played a bowl game, right? Right. Usually they give these, these coaches time for vacation and usually they can go home for maybe a week or two, enjoy the time with their families, especially after bowl season. But these guys who I talked to, they didn't get to go home. They were back on campus trying to keep their players on campus. And so it, wow. I, can't, I can't even imagine how difficult um, it is right now. But big, uh, big shout out to all the college coaches out there because, again, it's, uh, it's got to be tougher than ever. It's got to right. be tougher than ever. I know, I know it is. I know it is. It's, it's um, like a jigsaw puzzle. That's right. Right? You know, just, just – Trying to put it together, trying Just to, trying put, to it put it together, and trying to keep your team together. That's that is that's why I say it's, it's just changing. And the mm-hmm. only thing that's changing that is the money. Like you said, we want them to you know, make money. That's right. But wow, the porter and making money at the same time, we are recovered. That's a sword that you can't. Uh, it, that's a sharp sword, and you don't know which direction to go no more. And that's why it's the recruiting process so hard for the high school kids that are coming out right now. Right? They they got a relationship with this coach. When they get there, that coach is gone. Or when they get there, they have a big expectation. All of a sudden, other players don't transfer it in. Right. Now I got to transfer it out. So it's so confusing, right? And it's hard. You didn't have, have to deal with that. But there were other mm-hmm. challenges that you did have to deal with. Yeah. You felt like you were better than some guys. I mean, I, I, I see it in the process. Trying to get on the field. Try to be that starter. You did have that dream to go to the NFL at one point. Everyone have that dream. And I would say the NFL is a dream of college degree is reality, right? But having the best of both worlds would be great. Mm-hmm. What got in the way for you to actually have the opportunity to go to the NFL? Or what was it? 
Well, I'll just say this. I mean, of course, things happen over the course of your career as, as you, um, you know, from the very moment you brought up, um, you know, what it was like going through that process of being recruited. Well, you feel like you were the man. <laughs> you feel like you are the man on campus, and then you get to school, and you are at the bottom of the totem pole. <laughs> you are at the bottom of the totem pole. And so that can just be – that in and of itself is is some adversity you got to deal with and, mm-hmm. and learning how to play your role, mm-hmm. learning how to not be the guy who is, um, you know, the loud guy anymore. Mm-hmm. And so really um, – just from a personal standpoint, I went up to University of Connecticut, took a scholarship up there to play defensive back. And um, and so during that process, I was dealing with homesickness. I never lived anywhere else except the state of Florida. Right. And um, and so that that was a huge challenge to overcome, especially my freshman year. You're 18 years old. You don't have family around you. You don't really have anybody around you. You're you're trying to meet a whole new set of friends and teammates, and you're you're trying to get accustomed to a different culture um, than the Florida culture, of course. So it 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 was uh, it was just such a change. And and during that time, it's um, you're trying to get on the field, but getting on the field would compromise you coming home. And so, really, it was just like a catch-22, but it it really, uh, during that time, figuring out how bad do you want it? Mm. How bad do you want it? And so, you know, I I remember having mono in the spring of my freshman year, and so I I was out of spring ball. I wasn't with the team during winter workouts because, you know, it it just took me out. So... um, you know, having to come in and really just deciding, I want to do this. I want to do this. And that that really all falls back on the training and getting that extra training. And when you when I came home, yes. every time I came home, you better believe I didn't take a day off from training. I was like, I'm not up here for no reason. I'm not up here just to go to school. If anybody was going to pay for school, it's going to be me and I'm going to earn it. Right. And so... You know, deciding I want to be great at this. I want to get on the field. I want to contribute. I want to be a great teammate, and I just want to, you know, squeeze all the juices I can. And um, and of course, during that process, always you know keep in mind, like in the event of the worst case scenario, nobody thinks about Plan B. Right. Nobody thinks about Plan right. B. And so, their Plan A, B, and C. Most of my teammates, it was going to the NFL. And so when that didn't happen, you know, a lot of times guys went through identity crisis through an identity and still some to this day. Um, you know, I, I talk with a lot of my teammates and, um, you know, there are a few that I'm still trying to work through. And um, and so it can be tough. And so it's always important, you know, always keep in mind if the game is ever taken away from you, what do you got next? Right. I mean, it's, a lot of people don't think it that way. It's no. almost it's almost like when I, when I always tell my son, low them, never think it can't happen to you. Most athletes like, oh, that's not going to happen to me. That's not going to happen to me. Mm-hmm. No, I got a plan. I'm going to NFL. I'm that guy. I'm that starter. They always think that way, right? And when it happened to them, they don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. Now they're in limbo, mm-hmm. right? Injuries. Injuries. I want to get into the injury side of it, right? Mm-hmm. Like everybody talk about NIL. They're talking about the NFL. They talk about all the opportunities, right? But they, they're missing the boat because it still come down to getting that college degree. So when you do come home, if you don't have a direction, you don't know where you're going, you're not uh, networking, you're not linking up. There it is again. You're not linking up. At least we do go get a job. You can write down on that application. University of UConn. So, that, so I got an edge over someone that said Dr. Phillip High School, or Popka High School, Lake County High School, or Lake County Prep. So I, that is an edge now, because that's a stronger, you know, degree right there. So I got a little edge. I got a little edge oh, better yeah. than someone who got a high school oh, yeah. diploma. But do I have the edge of being coming in as that 
that manager will one day be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Now, we back to that again. Yeah. But here's what everyone forget. Injuries. I never forget. My is low. I'm going to use it as an example. Notre Dame, waiting his turn. One of the best quarter, cornerbacks I've ever seen, Lowood Jr. And it was proven. No, why? He had 27 offers coming out of high school. Called him the click, click, lockdown cornerback. Man to man, 47 snaps a game, 52 snaps a game. They put him on the best guy. He's that guy. Went to Notre Dame. Hard work got him on the field as a freshman. Hard work got him on the field as a sophomore. Grab a pick six, running back national TV. Boston College. Yeah, it is. We got 23. Now, here it is, 23. 20, number 23, DB, ranked in the country right now in junior year. Get ready to line up. Last practice before they go to Mar- uh, play against Navy at Ireland. Last practice. He come out MVP of the camp with all these big guys he had who going to go first-round draft pick. MVP of the camp. Last practice, he back up, spell something, pop, snap his Achilles. Hmm. Wasn't as prepared for that. Didn't play that year. They go 12 and 0, national championship game, runner up, get beat by Alabama. Ha ha Clint Dix out there, D Hard out there, who he played with, trained with yep. all his life. He came in the sideline, just rooting on his team. The next year, come back, can't get over that injury. He played. But he couldn't get back where he was at. Mm-hmm. A freshman took his spot. The freshman All-American that year, he was out. You, now you got to fit in where you get in. That injury right now still is kind of the key, that that kind of detour. Mm-hmm. But because he had the mindset of, I'm going to do this when I get out, and if there's a dream, I put in his mind all the time, college degree reality, he got a degree, that he's still working that field right now, doing mm-hmm. doing fine. Matter of fact, he is sweet by production over the list of the low shows. That's so, right. Right, right. What could have helped him? Because that was that was a tough blow. Yeah, we have insurance, you know, for us that get hurt, you know. And here's what even crazy than that. You got to have your insurance, and then the school is a secondary insurance. What could have been in place that would help him when it come down to after getting injury, because they never expect to get the injuries. They don't think about that. They don't think about if I get hurt, what's going to happen. What about them guys? Well, I'll just say this. I'll just say this, and we can we can keep it at this. What he could have gotten is high limit disability insurance. Wow. Permanent total disability insurance. And so the way that works is if he is totally injured to where he can't ever play again. Usually these policies go between five and ten million, maybe even twenty million for depending on the player. But the way it's underwritten is um, you know, again, you get hurt, can't ever play again, you get paid out ten million dollars. Wow. Wow. And so that happens all the time. And then you also have a, a number of other things that, you know, you can um you can tack on to the to the basic policy, the permanent total disability policy. I mean, you got things nowadays. Um, you got loss of value insurance, and that would the way that works is if you are somebody like a, a Caleb Williams, your projected first pick of the draft. Right. Well, say he decided to come back one more year. Right. Because he's getting paid all this NIL money. Right. Well, it's all based on, you know, future earnings. Correct. Right? So if he were to get hurt, third game of the season blows out his knee, he would be able to get paid out, you know, 60% of what he would have gotten had he been drafted in the first First round. round. Wow. You got critical injury. You tear your your MCL, ACL. uh, You tear your... um, you know, you need Tommy John surgery for baseball players. Right. Well, it goes upwards to a, a two hundred fifty thousand um, dollar payout. That's that's what it goes up to. So it goes between twenty five thousand, two hundred fifty thousand. Right. And so there are things nowadays that are coming to light 
um, that players can do to protect protect themselves, whether the school pays for it or they, you know, pay for it themselves outright, out of pocket, or they borrow against their future earnings. There, there are just ways around the worst case scenario that will put you in a better situation in the event of the worst case scenario. Right. So athletes now need to start thinking about that too. Start thinking about this. Start thinking about this. I, I wish I could. Wish I knew about this stuff. Right. And the thing is, these are the players who go through that identity crisis when the game is abruptly taken away from them. And so when the game is just snatched away from you, you don't know what to do. Right. You don't know. You have no, there is no cushion to be able to figure out what it is you want to do. You got to jump right into something. Right. It may be something you don't like. It may be something that, you know, maybe your skills are are more suited for another profession. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're great with people, but yet you're, you know, doing a job that you otherwise wouldn't have ever seen yourself doing. Right. So I remember Barry Sanders' son. Uh, he was at Stanford. Great, remember, he was a great running back. Great running back. Great running back. Hurt his neck. I think it was a neck or one or two. Done. Mm-hmm. So if they knew about this policy, or maybe they did, I don't know. This, there you go, right there. A lot of stuff that we don't know because the only thing that we're focusing on is what? Get to the NFL. Get yep. to the NFL. Instead of thinking about the reality side of it is life after NFL. Darren Monroe keeps, he said on one of the show, NFL stands for not for long. Not That's for not going to change. Nope. It's not going to change. They're not going to change uh, the NFL to um, always forever. They're not going to change that. They're going to stay and, not for and long. And the value of the NFL has multiplied by two since 2020. Right. So you're losing out on more money. Right, exactly. More future earnings. That's right. So having that, you know, in, in place now where athletes can understand for all sports. Mm-hmm. We're talking about all sports. We're not just talking about football, right? Football, volleyball. But, oh, they got professional. Anything they have a professional opportunity out there, this benefit. Right, that they don't know about, they need to know about, mm-hmm. right? And and I'm, I'm hope people are taking heed of this right here. I just want to make sure that when they people come to listen to low, they listen again, valuable information, they get the nugget, they get the information, mm-hmm. they're paying attention because everyone is chasing a carrot. Absolutely, like, they're chasing a carrot, right? And then when you do, when you don't get the carrot, you got nothing but the dipping sauce. That's that's <laughs> <laughs> it. What are you gonna dip in the sauce? Your finger. <laughs> No, I mean, it, it, it's true. It's true. It's true. And then I try to explain to parents and athletes, they got to look at the bigger picture. Protect yourself. You know, there were Plan B solutions for the Plan A pursuit. Oh man, I like that. Plan mm-hmm. B solution for the Plan A pursuit. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow. I'm talking about. We go. It goes back to the quote: "Step up to the plate." Mm-hmm. Look up someone that have done it that can help you get there. Yep. Link up with the right people to get to the top because lonely at the top. We talk about that. Have a plan. Plan A. You got plan A don't work. I got a B. B don't work. I have a C. I have a D. Keep having plans. Instead of if you, if you don't make it here, plan B. I'm there. And we talk about that all the time. But a lot of people still feel like it's just not there for me. It ain't for me. Or uh, it ain't gonna happen to me. I'm gonna make it. There are more guys that's on the corner or not doing what they're supposed to do because they keep saying, no, I'm going to make it. I'm going to end up better. Keep chasing. I know when to stop. Emmitt Smith got less injuries as a running back than any running back in the NFL. Everybody asks why. Because when he ran that ball, when he knew he's not going to score, he ran out of bounds or he went on down. Yep. Because he always said, I know when my journey is over. Know when your journey Steve. is over. It, it's that simple. Yep. You know, so I'm just glad I had an opportunity to sit here and let people hear the other side of it. Oh, yeah. Understand that. Have a plan. Have a plan. Parents understand. Have a plan. Yep. Be there for your kids. Make sure you're there with them. Someone got to do the work. Someone do the grind. Give them, show the, the, the love. Show the tough love. Tough love is everything. It's a balance. Yep. It's a balance. And having that balance is what's going to help them be successful. Yeah. 
And guys, listen, you heard it here, right there. You heard it here on episode six. You're listening to Low. Two ears, one mouth. We gave you a lot of nuggets today. We brought to you Ellis Martyr, law office Green Spoon and Martyr. He gave you the benefits. He gave it to you. Take heed of it. Take knowledge of it. Listen to it. Don't go in one ear and out the other. Keep it there. And make sure you continue to listen to Low. Make sure you follow us on YouTube at Camp King 12 K is for Kid. You're right now here on Sweet Fried Production. Like us, subscribe to us, and meet us next week right here for episode seven.